All right, we're back on Morning Line. Our guest is Allison Fields, veterinarian, and uh, we've got some lines open if you want to jump in. I think Lisa is on line five. Hi, Lisa. Yes, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Good. I've got a couple of questions. Sure. I've got two little dogs. One is a man pen mix, and he has got a bad cough. Have you been to see the vet? You what? Have you been to see your vet? I went to two different vets and they put him on antibiotics and nothing has worked so far. Um, <laughs> have you been back to one of the vets? A lot of times when, sh when, you, when you start kind of, coughs, coughs can be tricky. There can be a lot of reasons. There can be infectious reasons. There can be heart reasons. There can be collapsing trachea reasons. There's a lot of different reasons and we usually start with the most common, which would be an antibiotic. And then, um, you know, we kind of work our way down the list. So going to, it's kind of like same thing with people. Whenever you go from vet to vet or doctor to doctor, you aren't, you know, by the time you get to the fifth one and you tell him, oh, that we've done this, 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 and this, well, he's probably going to get it right because there's only two things left to do. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this vet was so smart. Well, no, he had the benefit of hindsight. So a lot of times if you stick with the same vet and you're like, okay, thanks for trying this. It didn't work. What, what, what's the next step that can solve the problem a little <coughs> quicker? Because um, if he's been on two rounds of antibiotics and it's not helping, I think we probably need to go in a different direction. So I would uh, definitely go back and see if they can figure something else out other than um, an infectious reason. Yeah. Well, I'm out of work right now. And there, you know, I've been trying to find out home remedies so I could help him, but... Yeah, the problem is home remedies are great if you know what you're treating. Um, and since we don't know exactly what's causing the cough, it's gonna be really hard to find a home remedy to fix it because we don't know whether it's a heart problem or some other kind of problem. Do you know any vets out there that would help somebody that... Um, well, I think that all vets are gonna require that you pay for your services when they're there. Um, most vets, or a lot of vets anyway, um, accept something called care credit, um, which a lot of doctors and podiatrists and dentists also accept. Um, it's a credit card that gives you a certain amount of time that is interest free to pay it off, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a payment plan. Um, <clears throat> So that is an option as well, or you can just, you know, call around and, and ask. But most vets these days are not doing any kind of payment plans or letting people run up, 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 run up a bill because most vets have had hundreds of thousands of dollars that never get paid, unfortunately, and, and they just can't survive, you know, if they're not yeah. ask, asking for things to be paid. And I know it's hard and, you know, people get mad because we do it because we love animals. We do, but I'm sure that the... Kroger loves food, but they still make you pay when you go. Yeah. Um, which is the hard part. But try the care credit. Um, Where do you go to find the care credits? I mean, um, is that you can go if, online. Okay, um, and if he doesn't have access to a computer, but they would have computers at the library. Okay, yeah, Charles, you or can something call like that. Care credit. Rather, They'll do it over the phone Lisa. as well. Um, but care credit is a great option. Um, okay. Like I said, dentists take it. Um, a lot. Some doctors take it. Podiatrists or other doctors that aren't necessarily always covered by insurance um, but that's an option and you know unfortunately a lot of times we have to see if we can call family or friends and see if they'll help us you know get that payment taken care of gotcha all right good luck with that good and, luck. Uh, yeah that's a tough situation let's go next to to Charles hi Charles hey how you doing hey what's on your mind well, well, not much right now I'm just going to enjoy this beautiful day before yeah. man work hits yeah how are y'all doing today? We're good. good. I'm the same way. It's going to be nice out today. Right. Yes, it is. Listen, we have got a three-year-old Pomeranian, hmm. okay? And, uh, of course, we know that they're known for barking a lot. True. Uh, but uh, our Pomeranian barks excessively. I mean, just constantly bad. Is there anything sure. that we can do to control her barking? Um, I would, t the, the first option would probably be a behaviorist or a trainer to come in and work with you guys on how to correct that um, in a behavioral modification sort of way. Um, I am not a behaviorist. Uh, 
but I know that they are out there and trainers that might be able to help you. There are also um, bark collars that you can use. Some of them shock. There's one that's out there that releases a burst of citronella um, from the collar, like underneath the dog's face, which doesn't hurt them, but apparently dogs don't really like the smell of citronella. And so when it feels the vibration of the bark, it releases a puff of citronella, which is you know a negative feedback mm. circle. Um, so there hmm. are options cool. out there for barking. I think that trying to correct it in a behavioral modification way typically gives you the best results, which would be with a trainer or a behaviorist. What do you think? Does that sound like it might help? Yeah, I'll bring you one. I sure appreciate y'all. Y'all have right. a wonderful day. Have Thank a good you. day. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's tricky. You know certain dogs and the yip. It you got to figure out. But I, the citronella, I like that yeah, idea. Yeah, I like that idea too. I mean, and I'm my I'm Harper, our dog, she goes out in the backyard and, and will bark. If we go out with her, mm -hmm. she typically doesn't as okay. much. She likes company. But I don't know what the problem is. She barks, 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 barks. So yes, we are going to, I think, maybe look into a collar. Yeah. Beagle just the same way. Yeah. Beagles, you know. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Do you realize, I'm looking at the weather, and we were talking about getting the animals ready. Look, today's going to be pushing 70. It's fantastic. Take your pets for a walk. Let them run around in the backyard. But right now, the prediction is potentially for snow on, on Saturday or oh, Friday. Yeah. Friday or Saturday, yeah. It's going to be uh, the high on Saturday, it's saying right now, is 41. Low, 23 overnight. I mean, all of a sudden, we're getting a snap. We're going to be swinging. We are. A good 30 to 40 degrees. Anyway, so be fun. take that into account. Nice weather now, but don't leave your animals, you know, untended. Right. It's about to get real cold. Yeah. And uh, and the frost is good because that'll kill some of the bugs, won't it? You know, Should. or help with that Hopefully. anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi. Hey. I've got a small question. I've got an eight-year-old um, dog, and well, my baby, and she has grown a blood blister or a ear blister and I don't know what to do about it. Should Have you been I to the vet? To the vet or can I just take something and kind of drain? No, I would go to the vet. You don't want to mess with ears. Um, ears bleed like crazy you're gonna have a Jackson Pollock splattered uh. red wall and ceilings and floors and everything else in your house go to the vet okay thanks okay yeah, yeah that's uh, a blood blister I, I don't know I, I don't I've know. seen those could it be a, an injury or so, it, it could people. be a hematoma I, I don't know that that's have you ever seen without, one on an ear yourself I mean I, I don't guess know what she's describing okay. so without seeing it but what I did can't you dealt with you. that she caused Lots the Jackson Jackson Pollock Ble a bleeding ear you poke an ear oh, they're just... really vascular there's not a lot of, of skin mm -hmm. there to cause pressure to stop the bleeding okay. ears bleed like crazy. when we see ear lacerations that yeah. come in or whatever our entire office is painted with blood How splatter. do you treat that? What ultimately do you do to bring it? It depends you, what the problem is. If it, let's just say a dog comes in with a bite or a lacer. It's, it's something well, you bit either and cut it open. Sew it up if you can. Just stitch or it up. You and then. Ban well, you can't really, unless there's edges to a pose. Right. You can't even stitch it. So if they just took a hunk out of it, you have to bandage it up and bandage that ear up to the head and some kind of uh Let it there's some agents on there that can stop um mm, the bleeding a bit maybe that stings a lot so a lot of it times does you sting. don't do that gosh that i'm glad you told her that because yeah, yeah she's no. messing with a blood blister on the the ear trying to think uh it's a whole lot cheaper to just go to the vet and get, have them to deal with it doing than to all the cleaning clean you're gonna house. have to deal with but yeah. that's crazy though. i would just think it would drip a little blood now well can the they case. shake their head oh and right yeah. Yeah. So it feels funny. They start shaking and there's just blood splatter everywhere. I mean, we've had to clean ceilings, the underside of exam. It's just let us clean our walls. You don't want to clean your walls. Do you think in general dogs have high thresholds of pain? Or is it just mad, mad, depends on the animal and the type of dog just as it does with humans? Some, some humans are more tolerant. I think it depends on the animal and the type of dog. But I, I do think that evolutionarily speaking, animals have a higher pain tolerance. I'm not saying they don't feel pain. I'm oh, saying yeah. they can tolerate it better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like cats. And cats are masters at hiding that anything is wrong because if they act like they're sick, something bigger and better comes along and eats them. Mm -hmm. So they don't act it's like they're sick. Six, they're yeah. like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. They kill every dead the next day. And you're like, I didn't even know the cat was sick. Right. Well, right, because this is what cats do.
Amazing. And dogs, to some degree, the same way, maybe? Yeah, I don't and I know. think they it just... depends on the breed. I mean, I've seen dogs. I saw a dog when I was in vet school who um, was a hunting dog, and somehow, some way, he got shot in the face, and literally, mm. he was walking down the hallway. It was a black lab. And like his nose was hanging over here. Oh my gosh. And he was oh. wagging and hey, hey, I'm so glad to see you. And oh I'm boy. like, oh my God. And he's like, hey, what's up? Yeah. He was just like, I'm here. I my nose might not be with me, but I'm here. I'm I'm happy. Just amazing. Just so amazing. I'm sure yeah. he was in pain, but he was just happy to be there and happy to see people. So he was being a typical black lab. Yeah. Wonderful dogs. All right. Well, as we wrap things up, it's the, it's the holidays. I want you to have a happy holiday. Merry Think Christmas. Think about your animals. And this time of year, a lot of kids, they want the puppy. Don't you're do put it. The, but don't do it. Don't do it. You're like, why not? We want to do it. Listen, if you're going to do it and you're dead set on it, Understand if, what when you go into it. Well, Research if you're going to do it, the parents of the child that want the, the animal should be getting it. Right. You should not ever get a pet for some unsuspecting parents to have to deal with their, with their child. Oh, I wasn't don't even thinking. It. If you buy a pet for someone else, you're being irresponsible. Yeah. All right. Um, you don't do that lot. without them There's knowing that. There's so much to know. You know, research your breed. So, so many animals that are Christmas presents end up in shelters. Yes, because they so get many. it. So they can have those priceless pictures yep. of the killed kid being so excited when he sees yep. the puppy under and then the kid and it, these are kids they lose interest in a few days right and then all of a sudden the puppy is making a mess in the house and you realize well we, and then you you're a horrible person if you do that I'm sorry that's just all there is to it you all of a sudden do this and then you decide well you know we got the pictures the kid had her nice fun time or his fun time under the tree let's give it up to the shelter where it's it may get not put for down about six or eight months well that's annoying when that happens that's you you're it wrong is. you don't do that so think about it and if you want to adopt it and you do it right Fantastic. I think you should tell us how you really feel. Oh, if you disagree with me, you're simply wrong. You don't buy an animal and give it up like that because I you're know, done with I your know. pictures. I you're know. wrong. There's no debate there. Anyway, we'll end on that note. Okay. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy you know, holidays. I love you. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, next year. Yeah, next year. That seems like such a long time. I know. All right. And we'll take a break. I'll have a programming note about tomorrow. Stay with us.